Hello world, it's Siraj, and CUDA is awesome. CUDA is the reason that we have deep learning, and most people, I feel like, are not familiar with the fundamentals of CUDA. So in this video, I'm going to convey to you some of the high-level concepts of CUDA by using examples from NVIDIA, and then I went through GitHub and I was searching for a pure CUDA implementation of a neural network, and there are a few out there, but none of them are really readable. Like, they're pretty intense. But I found one that I think is going to be readable and understandable, and that's by Sergey Bugrov. Uh, shout out to Sergey. It is a 350 line example of a perceptron, a simple one layer neural network uh, that is using pure CUDA, there's no Python involved, and it optimizes the GPU very efficiently for matrix math uh, parallel operations. So we're going to go through that example. I'm gonna to explain to you what CUDA is in this video. We're gonna run that example. And if we run that simple uh, perceptron right here in Colab, I'll show you how to set up uh, a CUDA environment inside of Google Colab. So even if you don't have a GPU set up at home, you can run this thing in Colab. Uh, this is what, what, what the output is. So you can see the prediction uh, is uh, getting more accurate over time. And what it's trying to predict is this very simple binary classification problem uh, that Sergey uh, wrote, which is uh, match these inputs to this simple output and then learn the mapping there. Very simple, but really the idea here is to learn the basics of CUDA and to understand why it's used. And then you'll, you'll just be better equipped to impress uh, an employer or uh, you know make your project run more efficiently on a GPU. It's just useful knowledge, okay? So that's the point of this video, all right? And, you know, I, I and a lot of other people go on these um, uh, speeches about how great Python and Keras and all these high-level tools are, and it's true, they are, but let's take a look. Let's take a look at one of the most popular, if not the most popular, uh, machine learning library, deep learning library out there, PyTorch on GitHub. Okay, so this is PyTorch. And PyTorch, as we know, it has this beautiful Python API. It lets us write neural networks. It's amazing and it does uh, back propagation, all those little details, it takes care of us. But let's take a look inside of PyTorch, shall we? Let's go into this uh, folder right here. And let's see, CUDA. Okay, so this is an entire folder dedicated to CUDA operations. And this one was uh, modified just 11 days ago. This one 23 days ago. So this is actively being worked on. CUDA stands for Compute Unified Device Architecture. It's by NVIDIA. And what it does is it's both a, it's a programming model, a programming architecture, it's a collection of libraries. It's basically a programming uh, paradigm built on top of the C language, so you need a C compiler, to optimize all the cores on a GPU to make sure that your neural network is using the full capacity, uh, its full parallel computing capacity uh, for inference and for training to make both of those processes faster. And if we look in any of these files, we'll find a bunch of CUDA code. So in this activation.cu file, so CUDA uh, files and in.cu, um, it's got a bunch of functions for activation, like a bunch of activation functions written in pure CUDA. So we've got prelu, we've got relu, uh, the whole elu family is in there, leaky relu, and these are all written in pure CUDA to optimize um, the GPU for uh, processing. And so I just wanted to show you a quick example of why CUDA is relevant today. Now another thought I thought I had was, well, NVIDIA is a single company and you know, you know, we're all about the open source movement here. So this is basically, vendor lock-in, right? Like why talk about NVIDIA GPUs and not other uh, types of uh, processing units? And the reason is, is because these bit major frameworks, TensorFlow, PyTorch, uh, NL uh, NLTK, they have all chosen to build on top of CUDA. So, you know, NVIDIA just is a genius because they got these big companies to build on top of their platform. So for the foreseeable future, we're going to have to deal with CUDA and we should learn CUDA because it's, it's, it's kind of awesome actually. It's, I've, I've I had a lot of fun going through these uh, NVIDIA docs, very extensive and trying to understand all the details of CUDA. And this is not my first time looking at CUDA. In fact, uh, when, I was a, when I was an undergrad at Columbia in the robotics lab, I was working on this project right here uh, with this PhD student, Austin Rader, on learning features for the Da Vinci surgical robot. So my task was to, for the first time ever, use CUDA to optimize um, uh, inference for this uh, computer vision model. It wasn't using uh, neural networks, it was a support vector machine. But I remember thinking at the time, this is much harder than anything I've ever seen in my computer science 101 class involving Java or um, anything like that. But now I look back and I'm thinking, that was like eight years ago, I'm thinking like, 
wow, you know, CUDA isn't actually that difficult. It's, it's actually pretty understandable. You just have to like stare at it for a while. So hopefully I can help you with that in this video, all right? So let's just first install CUDA. Let me, like these, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna give you this notebook um, in the video description. So if you want to see everything I'm doing, just click on that. These 10, these 11 commands will essentially install CUDA um, on our Google Colab, in our Google Colab notebook. So everything we need for CUDA, right here, it's going to install all of it. And it's pulling it directly from the NVIDIA website. This is CUDA 8.0. I mean, the newest version I think is 10.0, so I'm aware of that. But um, we're just gonna go with 8.0 right now for this example. So let's have it install, and then we're gonna test it out and see if it actually installed properly. Okay, so once CUDA is installed, we can test out its functionality by running this uh, script, the simple hello world script, and we'll use the CU flag to notify uh, Colab that this is, a, this is going to be C, CUDA C code. So uh, CUDA, by the way, isn't, it's, isn't a new programming language. It's C, but it's like C with an extension, like a GPU extension. So it's basically C, but it's C with a GPU extension of functions and variables um, that can access the GPU's memory and, and, and processors. All right, so we'll say, okay, in main, uh, std count C out, Hello world, it's Siraj. And then end it and then return zero. And that's it, that's our function. Okay, great, hello world, it's Siraj, great, it works. Okay, so now that we have CUDA installed and ready and running on our Colab notebook, let's write a simple script in C that adds two different elements together, two vectors with one million elements in each uh, vector, all right? So step one is going to be to write out our CU um, command line flag. And once we do that, we're gonna include the necessary libraries to help us write this IO stream for printing out what we, whatever we have. And then math, because we're going to about to do some math to add these two uh, arrays together. Um, okay, so the first thing we wanna do is write out our function, the add function, which is going to say, this is, a, this is a going to, each element is going to have, um, each vector is going to have n elements. We're gonna have two vectors. We're gonna have a pointer to one called x, and then a pointer to another called y. So now there are two vectors here, float y. Okay, inside of this, we're gonna say, we're gonna fill up every element in each of those vectors. So we're gonna have this very simple for loop. We're say i is less than n. So for every element that we have, let's say there are gonna be a million, go ahead and say um, the result at that, at that index is going to equal whatever is in the first element, whatever's in the first vector at that element, uh, at that index, plus whatever's in the second um, vector at that index, and that's gonna be our result, y. And um, that will be that. So we'll add the semicolon, and then that's, there we go. But, 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 all right, okay. Now let's keep going here. So that's that's our add function right there, our very basic add function. Now we're gonna we're going to write our main function. And inside of our main function, we're gonna actually define how big our array slice our, our array is going to be. So we're gonna say it's gonna be one million elements, one million elements. And this is just shorthand for writing a million in C. And say and then we're gonna say okay, we're gonna um, initialize both of our uh, our elements. We're gonna have our first our vector. Well, I'll, I'll just call them arrays because they are arrays. We're gonna have our first array, x. We're gonna have our second array, y. And both of, the, both of them are gonna be of size one million elements. And then once we have that, we're going to initialize both of those arrays. So we're gonna fill those arrays up with whatever values we want to fill them up with. So we're gonna say, so for n elements, n elements, go ahead and take that first array and for every um, index in that array, give it a value of one. And then let's say for the second one, we'll give every uh, index a value of two. These are float floating point numbers. And now we are gonna fill up our array. So once we've done that, we can say, okay, use that add function for a million elements um, for X and Y and add them all together. And that's gonna add all those elements on the CPU. Once we've done that, we're gonna say, okay, free the memory, so we'll say delete, whatever's in X, delete whatever's in X, delete what's, whatever's in Y, and return zero. And make sure there, there's not gonna be any errors as well. We want that to happen. 
So to make this thing GPU compatible, what we're going to do is we're gonna turn this function into a kernel. So uh, by using this global keyword. So this global keyword tells CUDA that this function needs to run on the GPU. So just by adding that global um, keyword to this function, this is now a GPU function. Now we haven't done anything specific, but we've all, all we've done is specified that. So what else can we change here? Well, instead of uh, defining these uh, variables like this, we'll say, we'll just have two plain pointers, float x and float y, float x and y, okay? And then we're gonna use that CUDA unified allocate, uh, we're gonna use that um, unified memory function to allocate it. So say here's the memory address of x, and we're gonna, we want it to be the size of n, because this is how big it's going to be, size of float. So it's gonna be a float uh, type of variable. And we wanna do that for both, CUDA malloc manage. Look at that beautiful um, compiler can already auto-complete what I'm typing. Thank you, Colab, for being able to do that. And time size of float, okay. So that is basically it. Oh, there's one more thing we need to do. We need to synchronize. Um, so this loop right here is basically the CPU checking the results of the GPU um, to see if there are any errors. But we don't want, uh, we want the CPU to wait for the GPU to finish before accessing that. So the way we do that is we say, in order for the CPU to wait for the GPU to finish, we run this function called CUDA device synchronize. Device synchronize. And that's gonna tell it to do that. And so once we run that, we can run NVIDIA's built-in profiler to see how fast it runs. So NVIDIA's profiler, NB, NVProf is the, is, the, is the keyword here, will basically say how fast this algorithm ran. And it's 126 uh, milliseconds, which is okay. You know, um, it, could, it could be faster and we'll make it faster in a second, but this is just a good benchmark right here. But we wanna really make it fast, like not just use a GPU, we want it to really use all the architecture of a GPU. And in order to do that, we need to use some of those GPU constructs that NVIDIA has defined like threads, blocks, and grids. So let me explain that to you and then we'll get back to this. Okay, so neural networks use matrix operations all the time. Okay, so we have some input data and it's full of numbers and it's full of numbers and then they multiply by another uh, matrix that's full of numbers, that's full of numbers. And so this matrix multiplication, we could just multiply each of these numbers sequentially, or we could multiply them all at the same time and get that output simultaneously in parallel. And the way to do that is with GPUs because of their parallel computing capability. So in this example, we have our input data, which is X, and it's full of just num the number one, 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 and it goes on for n, which is one million. So n equals one million. That's the size of each of these two uh, vectors. And now we have y, our second vector, which is full of the number two. So two, 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 up till n. And what we wanna do is we want to add these two vectors together. Now, if we do this on the CPU, we can say, okay, so first let's do, let's add these two together and that's gonna equal, what is it? Three, right, so three. Then do the same for this, and do that a million times. So on the CPU, that's gonna be sequential. Now, CPUs aren't necessarily uh, sequential. You can have threading on CPUs up to a certain amount, but you certainly can't have a million threads on a CPU. That's why we want a GPU, because there are a million elements here. So we can think of each of these processes, these addition processes, as a single thread. So if we have a CPU here, call it CPU, Okay, it's got a couple of cores, let's say four cores, and let's just say it's one thread per core. So we can say, hey, uh, CPU, process this on one core, so this first thread on one core. Process this second thread on the second core, and the third thread on the third, and the fourth thread on the fourth core, and the fifth on the, oh wait, we're out of cores. So this is why we need a GPU. So let's look at how this would look on the GPU. On the GPU, we're going to have a single thread. So we'll call it a thread. Now, the way GPU architecture is constructed is as follows. Each thread lives inside of what's called a block. And a blocks, blocks have multiples of 32. So 32, multiples of 32 threads per block. So um, in the example we're gonna use, there's gonna be 256, which is a multiple of 32. And each of these blocks can have a certain amount of threads. And this collection of blocks, we call it a grid. So you have grids, and grids, so Basically, you have a grid of blocks of threads, okay? And the reason there's a limit to the number of threads per grid is because there's, first of all, this global memory, so you have memory, so both of these um, 
processors have memory. You have your CPU memory, and then you have your VRAM, or your uh, virtual video memory, virtual memory for your GPU. And uh, that's the global memory. But then each of these blocks has their own shared memory. So that's why there's a limit to the amount of threads per block. So what we want to do is we want to say, okay, uh, CUDA, we have one million elements to add. Um, and we want to do that in parallel. So how do we do that? Let's say one thread per add operation means that we need one million threads. Okay, so um, because there's a memory limit for each of these blocks, then we know that we want the max amount of threads um, per block, and then we want the max amount of blocks that come out to uh, one million threads. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we can define this as a simple function, where we say the number of blocks, num blocks, we want is going to be one million divided by the size of a single block, so 256. But we want it to be a nice round number because 256 doesn't go exactly into a million. Uh, so we're going to do a little bit of, uh, we're going to do a little trick here. We'll say n plus the block size, which is 256, minus one, which is going to make it a nice even number divided by the block size is going to give us the number of blocks that we want. And that's going to come out to be, uh, in our case, 4096. It's 4096, because 4096 times 256 is going to be some number that's about 1 million. Because that's how many threads we want to run. And so once we define it as such, when, once we define in our add function, hey, this add function is going to have um, this many blocks, so 4096, and it's going to use 256 threads, so block size, and we're going to do that on the um, n number of elements in x and y, that's going to run like lightning fast. That's going to do all those operations simultaneously on the GPU, which is exactly what we want. So let's look at that. Okay, so that's the concept of threads and blocks and grids. Now, let's see what happens when we actually implement that in our code. And so, by the way, what, I've, what I'm doing here is I'm uploading those examples, even though I'm writing them out in Colab, I'm writing them out in Colab, I'm uploading them uh, from a .cu file because NV Profiler expects an actual file in a directory to be able to um, analyze. You can't just analyze a script that's just um, there as a cell in a Jupyter Notebook. It's gotta be inside of a, a file. So, even though I'm writing it here, I've also, um, uh, created files for those that I've uploaded to Colab, as you can see here, uh, and then I'm gonna show, and then I'm gonna use the profiler on those uh, files to just show you an example, all right? So let's say that we want this to run on a bunch of threads, okay? So we'll say that for the add function right here, we're going to turn this into a CUDA, we're gonna turn this into a kernel by adding these three brackets, and we're going to say this, we're gonna say, um, we want there to be one block and we want it to run on 256 threads. So the threads are multiples of 32 in size. And um, so 256 is a multiple of 32. And we'll say that there's gonna be 256 threads in one block. And that's gonna be inside of the add function. And that's how we define it in that way. Same other input parameters, the size of it and the two vectors in question. And then we go up to the actual function up here and we the, the, what we change here is we say we're going to access those elements we're going to have an index we're going to have a stride and we're going to say run this thing on we're going to say get the id of the thread wherever we're at and get the dimension of the block wherever we're at and then inside of this, we're gonna start at wherever the index is, go up to n, increase by the length of the stride, and do the same thing. And that simple change is going to vastly speed up this process because now it's running on 256 threads instead of one thread, which is huge. And as you can see here, the results speak for themselves. 3.95 milliseconds to run this as opposed to 126. A huge, huge speed up, but we can speed it up even more. So we had basically one million add operations happening between those two vectors for every single element, right? And we had 256 threads for that. But ideally, we want a million threads because we want all of those um, additions to happen simultaneously. So one thread per addition. And if we could do that, 
that would vastly speed it up, right? And so the way we do that is we define blocks. So one of the questions I had when I was looking through this was like, why don't why not why don't we just maximize the number of threads possible um, to like infinity? Like why uh, why do we have to like do this in such a precise way? Well, because there's a trade-off. The more if we have an abundance of threads, then that's going to take away from our space complexity, so it's going to be space inefficient. But if we have too few threads, it's going to take away from our time complexity because this could have been more efficient. So we want to have just the right number of threads. And I found this great cheat sheet of all the different ways that we can construct these threads. I mean, this is not this is a little advanced for this single video, introductory video on CUDA, but this is just an example uh, by cs.calvin on you can have a 1D grid of 1D blocks, a 1D grid of 2 blocks, a 1D grid of 3D blocks, a 2D grid of 1D blocks, a 2D grid of 2D blocks, a 2D grid of 3D blocks, a 3D grid of 1D blocks, a 3D grid of 2D, a 3D grid of 3D blocks. So, there, so is there, you can increasingly increase the number of dimensions as based on how many operations you have running simultaneously. And, and so you have to be very precise and know how many operations are running so that you can allocate the threads and the blocks efficiently. So. Um, as we said before, the way to compute uh, the number of blocks we want is to divide it by the size of, you know, the block size, so the however many threads, and then that's the number of blocks. So in this case, it's going to be 4,096 because 4,096 times uh, 256 comes out to about 1 million, which is the number of threads we want. So, so, we, so we, we're going to define that. So we'll say int block size is going to be 256, int num blocks is going to be n plus the block size minus 1 divided by the block size. Just because, just for rounding purposes. We could have just done n divided by the block size, but just for rounding purposes, we want to make sure it's a nice clean round number. And that's going to be the number of blocks, 4096. Um, and then the block size is 256. And that's our function. It's going to utilize literally every single possible thread for every single possible um, addition that's happening here. And that's going to basically max out our GPU computing capabilities. And here's a, here's a great image from NVIDIA on, on how that works. You have 4096, that's the grid dimensions for each of these threads. This is how you get the index. You take the block ID times the dimension plus the thread ID, and that gives you that. And when we profile this, this is even faster. It's 3.2 milliseconds uh, instead of 3.9. So that's using the full vector capability uh, of the GPU. All right, so now that we've, I've shown you some of those examples, let me sh let, let's, let's analyze this neural network CUDA example by Sergey, shall we? Okay, so let's start um, in the main function right here, okay? So this is a one layer um, neural network, a perceptron. And so what we have is we have our input data, we have our first set of weights, we have our hidden layer, we have our next set of weights, and then we have the output. That's it. Those are the elements, the major elements. And this network is training on the iris data set, very popular data set, where you have an iris flower, or, you know, one of the different categories of what type of flower it's going to be. And then you have four um, input features, which is the sepal length, sepal width, sepal height, and I think petal uh, length. So there are four features here. So let's let, let's go through what he wrote here and, and try to figure out how it's optimizing the GPU, shall we? So we have our main function. Great. And what we're going to do is, so he has these um, flags. So H underscore stands for this is a host variable. And then D underscore stands for a device variable, GPU, CPU versus GPU. Okay, so let's just get that out of the way. The first step is for us to define our hyperparameters, like always in neural network training. Great training size, dimensions, uh, the size of the first layer. And then we're gonna define the input data. Okay, and these are, uh, there are four data points here. Each of them has four features. We'll define that input size, and then we're gonna allocate space on the GPU for that input data. So, okay, we've got some GPU space for that input data. Then we're gonna initialize the first weight matrix randomly. That's why you see this random max uh, variable right there. And generally in neural networks, we uh, initialize our weights randomly. Then we allocate sp space on the GPU for the weights. So you see uh, the, pro the pattern here is every time we define some variable, we have to manually allocate uh, space for it. This is, uh, this is basically C, right? This is what happens in C, the beauty of C. We don't have to do this in Python, but it's kind of cool actually to, uh, Python, it's, it's automatically done for us, but this is actually the, the, the real deal here. So once we allocate C, uh, GPU space for the weights, we'll define the layer one size, its variables, and then give its initial values of zero, because uh, it's going to get um, values in the future uh, through backpropagation. There, there are also these other two variables that are defined, the L1 delta and the buffer. The delta is basically the 
it's, it's making space for the back propagation uh, gradient, which is going to come in a second. And the buffer is just, a, is just a copy of it. And then we allocate GPU space for layer one, for the buffer, for the delta, then allocate the last, the next and last weight randomly, allocate GPU space for that, define our four labels, um, allocate GPU space for that, define the prediction and the prediction delta, um, allocate GPU space for that, um, and for the delta, which is the gradient, and then lastly, train the model. So with this one kfit um, kernel function, uh, it's gonna train the model on one block with one thread. Then, then once we're done, we're gonna send all those variables back to the CPU, free up the GPU memory, free up the CPU memory, and then print out all of those predictions while because the predictions are on the CPU, and then free the CPU memory. Okay, so uh, that's that. Now let's look into some of these functions here. So clearly this kfit function is the most important. So let's look at that one. So for 50 iterations, this is what's happening. So these were all custom functions he wrote uh, for, or sorry, I should say kernels, CUDA kernels for all of these steps. So basically you can think about the whole neural network uh, process happening right here. This is a training process. The first two lines are basically uh, doing forward propagation. So that's input times weight, not, no bias, activate. Input times weight, uh, no bias, activate. There's no bias here. You, you should have, but it's okay. And then that's gonna compute those. So we say, so D dot is what's doing that input times weight uh, uh, operation. And then D sigmoid is applying the activation, the sigmoid uh, activation to that uh, product. And then the same thing happens on the second line. Once both of those have been computed, then the back propagation happens by saying, um, compute what the error is. So subtract matrix is basically subtract the result from the uh, label in terms of accuracy, and then use that to compute the gradient, and then do the same for the second for the for the second one. And this d dot is basically uh, computing the transpose of the matrix, which allows us to get the gradient. So we want two sets of gradients to, to update uh, the weights of zero and one. So that, that's what these two are. Use, use those computed gradients to update, up, update both of those weights. So let's look at, say, d sigmoid, for example. d sigmoid is basically the CUDA version of a sigmoid function. So inside of d sigmoid, this is wrapping a k sigmoid function, which is the actual kernel. Okay, so this is on device, and this is on the, on the GPU. And basically what's happening here is it's defining those, just like in that previous example we looked at, it's defining this, uh, the operations by the number of threads we have using the block thread, um, the block and thread variable counts. And this right here is basically the sigmoid function to compute the output. And it's doing that on as many threads as we have possible, just one on one block, but still, it's a great example of that. Very, most simple example I could find, actually. And so we have that, and let's look at one more, uh, D dot. So we, have, so we looked at D sigmoid, let's look at D dot. So D dot is the dot product, it's the actual matrix multiplication. So if we look at D dot, of course it's nesting the actual function. So here it is, D dot right here, computes the product of two matrices right here. So really the, the only difference here is that it's, it's going through each of these matrices and it's com uh, performing those operations all at, all at once. Um, but the difference is that it's um, doing this on the GPU using this, these block and thread variables. So it's not just happening sequentially, it's ideally happening in parallel. And that's basically that's the same case for the rest of these functions. It's just adding in the block and thread functionality to all of them. And that's it, really. Um, and then at the end we print it all out. Uh, I hope you like this video. Hit subscribe if you want to keep seeing uh, videos on artificial intelligence and mathematics and all sorts of uh, cool computing technologies. And until next time, happy learning.